Okay, I want to do something a little bit different today and derive the formulas for the half angle substitution. And I will try to pronounce this even though my German isn't great, but I would say it's Weierstrass substitution. Weierstrass, Weierstrass, Weierstrass. Anyway, for this video, I just want to derive all the formulas we need. I'm not going to do an example. I'll provide links to other examples I've done in the past. And I think I might follow up with a few examples after I do this video. Okay, so to get started with this, I'm going to assume we have an integral with either sine x or cosine x in it. Now, this actually could work with other trig integrals, but I'm just going to kind of, for our purposes, assume that we have sine x and or cosine x in our problem. So just for an example that I'm not going to do, we could have an integral like sine x plus cosine x plus 1. This would be kind of a good case for a virus stress substitution. So seeing we have an integral like this, this is kind of an unusual substitution because we don't even have any half angles. But it turns out this is going to work pretty nice. So this is our starting point. This is the substitution we want to use. And what I'll do is just rearrange this by taking arctan on both sides. So if we do that, we're going to end up with arctan of t equals x over 2. But then if I just multiply by 2 on each side, then we've, we've isolated our x. And so what that allows me to do is I can take my derivative and rearrange this so we're going to get dx here. And so the derivative here, we'll just have our 2, and the derivative of arctan is just going to be 1 over 1 plus t squared dt. And so I'll just box this because this is going to be a useful value we will need to do if we're doing an integral. And I'll box this one too just because this is the starting point. So now we have the dx value for our substitution. But if we have an integral like this, we're going to want a value for sine x and we're going to need a value for cosine x. So before I get to that, what I want to do is just draw our triangle. And I'll do this for this triangle. I'm going to use this as the starting point. So the angle on this is going to be just x over 2. And for t, I can write this as t over 1. So tan of x over 2 is just going to be opposite over adjacent or t over 1. Then using, then using the Pythagorean theorem on this, we can find our hypotenuse to just be square root of 1 plus t squared. But the nice thing about having our triangle now, we can find a few more values. We can find our sine value for x over 2, not for x, but just for this angle here. Sine of x over 2 is going to be opposite over hypotenuse. This is just going to be 2 over square root of 1 plus t squared. And then doing the same thing for cosine, Cosine x over 2 is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse. So this is just going to be 1 over square root of 1 plus t squared. So now that we found our value for sine of x over 2 and our value for cosine x over 2, we just need to use some trig identities to get this back to find a value for sine of just x and cosine of x. And so what we'll do for that is just use our double angle formulas for sine and cosine. So here we have our double angle formula for sine and cosine. And this gets me a value for sine of 2x and cosine 2x, but we want sine of x and cosine x. What I can do is use the same formula, but just kind of do like a little substitution with the same variable. I can take x and we can substitute an x over 2. I could change the variable name and go through all that, but I think we know what we're trying to do. Here. We just kind of want to plug in x over 2 in here, everywhere we see an x. So that way, all these become half angles by taking the half of everything here. And then if I make this x over 2 and this x over 2, then the 2s are going to cancel. But now just by doing that, we have our way to get our value for sine x and cosine x. Now we have it in terms of the half angle, and we know what those are in terms of t. So we want to get everything into t. So what I can do is just kind of plug in over here. So we have 2, our value of sine x over 2. That's just going to be this. So I'll write in t over square root of 1 plus t squared. And then for cosine x over 2, this is just going to be 1 over square root of 1 plus t squared. So then just multiplying all this together, we get our value for sine x, which is going to be 2t over 1 plus t squared. Next, we want to do basically the same thing for cosine of x. And we have these values that we just need to plug in. So for cosine squared of x over 2, we just want to square this right here. So that's going to become 1 over 1 plus t squared. And then minus, for sine squared x, we just want to square this. So that's going to become t squared over 1 plus t squared. But again, we have the same denominator, so we put that together and we get our value for cosine of x, which is 1 minus t squared over 1 plus t squared. And now with everything that we found boxed over here in blue, we've got everything we need to do a substitution for sine x and cosine x. Now, of course, if your integral had tangent or other things, we can just derive them from these. Like, if we wanted to find tan x, we would just divide sine x and cosine x, and that would be just 2t over 1 minus t squared. And of course, you can get cotangent by taking the reciprocal here, or cosecant taking the reciprocal here, or secant taking the reciprocal here. Okay, so there you have it, all the formulas you need for the half angle substitution. And like I said earlier, I'll provide links to some other videos, the other derivations, and some other examples, and I might do a few follow-up examples.
Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.